this is a Rage Hypodermic. It's a 125 grain head. And I am extremely opinionated about this head. One thing I am very confident in though is this stock archery arrow that is backing up this Rage Broadhead. This is one of those heads that you guys have been asking me to test out and use for a very long time. And the only versions of this Broadhead that I have shot have been the Amazon Cheapo versions of this Broadhead. And I was extremely disappointed. I hope that that same thing doesn't ring true with the 54 or $55 version. That's one thing that I do not like about Rage is that since they've been around for so long and there's so many people that, that love them, and, well, but there is a whole lot of people that hate them, nonetheless you're paying for the name. I don't care for the blade design and how they deploy. I don't, I don't really care for rear deploying broadheads at all. But I am uh, very opinionated about this particular head because I have, and I kid you not when I say this, I've seen it fail just as many times as I've seen it work. There's a lot of whitetail hunters out there, and that's all they do is hunt whitetails. And they use Rage Broadheads, or they use Schwackers, and that's all great, fine and dandy. But I've seen them fail on just about everything from whitetails to hogs. And by fail, I mean zero penetration and not because of hitting bone. Um, I've personally seen on contact these blades literally spark I'm not sure what causes that other than friction however i've seen a lot of deer get away and pigs and then return uh, to the feeder and, and you get a trail camera picture of them not long after i don't know why this broadhead is this way and i talk a lot of smack about this broadhead and i came to the conclusion the other day that i can't talk smack about a broadhead that i haven't personally used myself the real thing, of course. I've used the Amazon knockoffs, the same exact broadhead, just, just some junk that you find on Amazon that I use for varmint hunting. <laughs> we are gonna put this broadhead to the test on some hogs, or a hog, and hopefully tonight a whitetail. I've got some does that have been hammering this spot pretty hard, and I got a, I got a big old nanny in my sights. So I'm looking forward to sitting here and hopefully slinging an arrow. I look forward to sharing the verse of the day with you guys as well. It comes from Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. It says, Plant the good seeds of righteousness and you will harvest a crop of love. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts for now is the time to seek the Lord that he may come and shower righteousness upon you. Now's the time guys. It's never too late and you've never done too many bad things not to turn to the Lord. You can't do enough bad things to receive the uh, the love of Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior in your life. The feeder just went off a few minutes ago. So let's sit, sit back, y'all. Get quiet and y'all enjoy this one with me.
<laughs> Let's check to see if our our broadhead survived. Yeah, that's a super wide cut. That's way wider than I was anticipating. So that blade right there has got a slight bend to it. That one right there has got a real bad bend to it. <coughs> the tip is otherwise in good shape. This ought to be one heck of a trail. <laughs> that stock archery arrow is just uh, looking good. It's pretty sweet. <coughs> looking good so far. She was standing mm. right there. So approximately 15, 20 feet away. We've got our first spray edge. She couldn't have gone too far. There's some more here and here. I'm gonna be pretty critical on this trail. And what I mean by that is as far as mechanicals go, they're known for leaving some really good ones. And that's a pretty wide cut head. And not only that, but it was a, I mean, smooth as butter passed through right behind the shoulder, so. Uh, should be pretty phenomenal especially considering the blood trail that I had less than a week ago on that last doe at the same spot and it was I wouldn't say marginal it wasn't my best shot ever but she sure did a whole lot better job than this of course we're just now in at about 50 feet random big spurts like this I expect it to be quite a bit more especially being through the pump station like it was finally starting to open up a little bit it's getting easier and easier to follow the walk there she is right there hey dear I mean, wow. <laughs> I expected it to be a much better trail than what it was. The last doe that I took out from this spot, she crossed the creek and ran about another 50, 60 yards. So I don't have nearly as far to take this one, thank goodness. I didn't finish the video out that particular night because it was about 15 below freezing and it was just that. It was absolutely freezing and miserable cold and it was hard to keep cameras alive. So I'm finishing it now. I said before I started the track that I was going to be quite critical of this broadhead. And it, it wasn't just because it's a rage and I don't particularly care for it. But I'm that way with all mechanicals because, in my opinion, depending on shot placement and location, you should have a good blood trail. Especially with these bigger cut on, these bigger cut and diameter broadheads two inches and above. All in all, I wasn't overly impressed with the trail that it came from this particular hunt. I know that there's thousands of people out there with wild success using these heads. And it's hard for me to label this broadhead, if you will, after one deer. This is no longer deer season, unfortunately, so we can't have a round two, at least not currently and legally we can later this year this fall and we might do that but i want to hear y'all's opinions down in the description below should i try it again or let it be we will be testing this broadhead on a hog or two undoubtedly i mean that's a given for sure but as far as white tails go you guys let me know down in the comments below the deer didn't run very far but it just wasn't the the trail that i was expecting especially with the shot placement the broadhead suffered some pretty serious damage which I was expecting. I've had lots of mechanicals that same size come out better on the other side with the exact same shot location and placement. So I am disappointed there. I've heard a lot of people say that Rage, especially the hypodermics, are kind of a one and done type of thing. And for 54 or $55 for a three pack, that's kind of hard to swallow. It's a hard pill to swallow. So, you know, 
As far as durability goes, it's down there on the list. I mean, it's not a very durable head, I would say. Sharp, yes. Durable, not so much. I am very excited to see how this broadhead is going to perform on some hogs, but I have a feeling I'm going to be just sadly disappointed. I don't get all the hype, and I know that I still won't be able to understand all the hype even after I run this broadhead through the ringer. I have two or three packages of them, and we're going to use them. No doubt about it. We're going to use them. I want to know what y'all's opinion is of this head. You have now heard mine, and I'm looking forward to hearing y'all's. Whether you've used them or not, and especially those that of you that use them all the time, let's get the comments section rolling, because I'm, I'm extremely interested, as I said. I want to hear y'all's experiences, and I need them to be honest. Hope y'all enjoyed this one. Coming in uh, March, a little deer season in March. Just a little something to get you through until October depending on which state you're in, uh, September or whatever it is, um, gets back to present day. I'm ready for deer season to kick off again. But in the meantime, we're going to go sling some arrows and some hogs. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. If you like these broadhead testing style videos, be sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications bell while you're at it. You are awesome, and I'll see you in just a few days. Try to catch me howling at the moon